every woman that prays or prophesies with her head uncovered dishonorates her head come with me deep alive you know somebody is coming to our church and she happens to be a lady and as we see her entering by that door she has not covered her head and so somebody will run there and bring out an extra scarf and give her and say don't enter yet don't enter yet cover your head well to start with we don't know whether she's born again or she's not born again we don't know whether she even knows anything about prayer or not we don't know whether she knows anything about prophesying or not and we say stay there by the door we delay her there you must cover your head every woman that prays or prophesies every woman that prays or prophesies with her head uncovered dishonors her head and there are people that will not even allow those ladies to get saved those ladies to understand the word of god and they confront them out there before they even enter the church and they're not praying do they know how to pray they're not prophesying they don't know how to prophesy but we impose on them you must have this now and if that lady says what kind of church is this that me a dignified woman coming from my place and i just want to fellowship here today and they treat me like a primary school girl and say you must have this and they even brought something out for me to wear that will not match my dress that's my last time i'm not going there you see because we do not understand how to position the word of god we drive a lot of people away i pray god will give us understanding in his word in jesus name and then you are welcome to the end time truth television the channel for the lovers of truth for the truth of the end time so if you are a lover of truth give us a subscription and god bless you shalom hello good morning good afternoon good evening how are you doing today god bless you um this is just a rejoinder uh to the video i uploaded last time where pastor dr wf kumui was addressing his uh, ushers his workers particularly the ushers on how not to deal or how to handle new persons that probably came to the church for the first time and they were not dressed as per the standard of the church most especially in the areas of covering of hair and at the end of that you know uh, video i did put in my own input but i discovered that some persons are so worried about it and let me categorically state here to you that i don't have any authority over you you can choose to dress the way you want you can choose to go to church the way you want but then that you don't agree with me doesn't make me a legalistic preacher it doesn't make me, um, you know, uh, a demon or that I am twisting the word of God. I'm not going to go into some uh, kind of word so that it won't sound as if I'm responding particularly to some individuals that, you know, find it um, uncomfortable because sometimes we look at the word of God and the Bible said that, you know, the word of God is like a mirror. You know, now when when you see the way you see yourself in the mirror, the way you are dressed in the mirror is how actually you appear. And sometimes, you know, some persons may find some things that, uh, you know, they find so, or, or, or how do I put it now, that like looks like a cultural shock to what they have believed in. I've not said in that video that you are a child of the devil if you don't dress according to the norms that I found in the scripture. I haven't said so. And I haven't said that you would go to hell because of that. I've not called you a child of the devil, but I believe the scriptures. And if we are God's children, I think we should understand the Bible. Now, the, the, the Bible, Apostle Paul started by, you know, putting himself forth first and asking the people to be an emulator of him as he is of the Lord Jesus. And I questioned and I said, 
You know, do we have many pastors today? I'm not saying that all pastors are evil, but I'm saying, do we have many pastors? Which means that there are still some pastors that can be emulated, even though that our standard is Jesus Christ, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Now, but if Apostle Paul could say, be you a follower of me or emulator of me as I am a follower of Jesus Christ, that means that there was something about Paul that is lacking in many of us today. And he went ahead to praise them because they have been you know, uh, uh, observing things as he had laid them down for them. Remember the, the Corinthian church we used to be one of the most troublesome church you know, uh, you know, in the time. In fact, I think it was the most uh, controversial church around that time. But here, in verse 2 of First Corinthians chapter 11, Apostle Paul praised them that they had adhered to his. He said, Now I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. Now verse 3, But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. He started by, you know, addressing certain things. And probably this is also one of the areas that there was controversy in the church. And he used this, you know, as a step to, you know, order some things. Now, I read in the comments that uh, what Apostle Paul was meaning was that those who were married must cover their head, you know, because of their husbands. But I understand also that that church, because I believe that this letter was read in the open, uh, you know, uh, um, gathering of the church, now, there was no discrimination here. Apostle Paul didn't say the married women. Apostle Paul did not single out anybody, but he made it categorically clear that this is the order of worship. If, it's like when he, you know, he, he, he said that, you know, the scripture said uh, that uh, the wife should be submissive to the husband, just as the church is submissive to Christ, and that the husband should love the wife just as Christ loved the wife enough to die for the church. Now, should we now say that that is particularly for the church, that the man should do behave the way he likes because Apostle, you know, Apostle Paul was using allegory. Now, so the, the fact is that the Bible cannot be, you know, uh, the truth of the word of God cannot be overemphasized. Now, like I said, I don't hold any authority over anybody. You can choose to believe what you want to believe. But my take on this is that whether you are married or not, now, I believe that I said, you know, uh, almost everything that was needed to be said in that other video. So if you have not watched it, you can look for it and watch it. And mind you, I wasn't coming from the point of having any authority over you. You chose what you want to believe. You chose what you want to do. If that is okay with you, I just understand that at the end of it all, at the end of the day, everything is of God. The Bible says, you know, in, this, in that same place, from verse 10, from verse 10, for this cause ought the woman to have power on her head because of the angels. So even, uh, you know, looking away from the fact that he was using this cultural um, allegory of the woman being, being covered, uh, signifying a respect and honor to her husband. But at the same time, he spoke, if, if, we, if we take it from, from verse 6, he says, for if the woman be not covered, let her also be shown. For if it be a shame for a woman to be shown or shaven, let her be covered, consistent with the feminine gender, woman. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head, for as much as he is the image and the glory of God. But the woman is the glory of the man. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. For this cause ought the woman to have power on her head because of the angels. Nevertheless, neither is the man without the woman, neither the woman without the man in the Lord. For as the woman is of the man, even so is the man also by the woman, but all things of God. Now, all things of God. The woman, the man, whatever principle, whatever custom, whatever culture, you know, all things are of God. And let's even look at it this way. Uh, we know that there are some women in that church who are, were widows, you know. Should we say now, okay, because they, they are not, uh, you know, that the husbands were dead, that they were excluded from the, the uh, epistle. 
that has to dress this. This was addressing the whole church. It was addressing the entire congregation. Now, but like I said, if you have problems with it, just deal with it. It's not me. The Bible says in verse uh, in verse 15, that not even nature itself teaches you that if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him. But if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her, for her hair is given her for a covering. But if any man... Now look at this verse 16. It says in verse 16, the Bible says in verse 16, But if any man seem to be contentious, we have no such custom, neither the churches of God. If we read it with other, other you know, translations like the Amplified Version of... Now, if anyone is disposed to be argumentative and contentious about this, we hold to and recognize no other custom in worship than this, nor do the churches of God generally. Now, so he even moved from this being culture to the standard of the worship of God. Now, so if the, the Bible brought in the angels and this being the standard of the worship of the, the church of God, so I really do not want to uh, you know, join words with anybody. Now, for those of you that feel it is uncomfortable, please choose what you want to do. You know, the Bible says, uh, let he that is unrighteous be unrighteous still. Let he that is righteous be righteous still. In the meanwhile, I have not called you a sinner. I have not, you know, said you are going to hell because you are not covering your head. On that day, the Lord will determine what happens to those that chose to serve him the way they served him. All right. But then he doesn't give you a right to demean others who chose to believe what they have read in the scripture. It doesn't give you a right to call them names. It doesn't give you a right to demonize them. It doesn't give you a right to call them religious. There are certain things that, you know, we don't do. It is written in the Bible. And if anybody has chosen to do that, that is okay. Now, when we say that, you know, the head has to do with being submissive to the husband, you know, to the husband, but what the Bible says is men. Now, Take the husband out of the way, you know, should the woman not also be reverential unto God? Now, if there are those who are not married in the church, as some persons have, have said, now to whom are, were they accountable to? Are they supposed not to live their lives anyhow just because there is no man in their lives? At least they still have, you know, a God that cares for them as their, their own husband, a God that cares for them as their father and as their husband. And if a, if a child should honor their father, I think all of us should honor God. But remember that... All things is of God. All things are of God. If we, you know, accept that this is for the woman to her husband and, the, you know, man to God, and this is, you know, uh, progressive. Now, that means that if the woman doesn't do it, he disrespects the man. And then indirectly, he also dis she also dishonors God. But then put everything together, lumping together, all are of God. And then if you have any form of argument, contention, and you're not happy about it, please deal with it in the way you choose to deal with it. So I, I needed to do this because I know that so many people would read the comments and they would get confused. See, I like you to follow the leading of your conscience and your spirit. If your spirit is still alive, if your conscience is still alive, I even want to ask, what is the big deal? in covering your hair while praying, in covering your hair in the church. What is the big deal? You know, while, you know, discussing the scriptures, covering your hair. What is the big deal? Now, when people make it look, I mean, I see so many, so much hypocrisy. We see a lot of pastors' wives, their husbands are alive, and they, you know, they they, they come, they preach, and they prophesy, even without their hair covered. And so if if, if somebody, you know, you know, there is there are these preachers of adulterated grace, I believe in grace. I don't believe in, in the works of the flesh, but I believe in the good work that the Spirit of Christ enables us to do after accepting Christ. For then that the blood of Jesus Christ is capable to purge our conscience of every dead work so that we will offer the right kind of service and worship to God. Now, if your, your conscience has been purged by the blood of Jesus and you still dwell in the old nature of sin and continue in, in it and you wallow in the ignorance and the pitiable excuse of the fact that you said you, you believe in Jesus and so that is it. I mean, that is not the scripture. So I just want to put this in perspective, all right? Choose what you want to believe, but Moses called the people, he said, Behold, I said before you today, life and death, you know. And then he gave them the choice to choose what they want. Joshua said, I know that you will go after other gods, but behold, I and my family, we have chosen to serve the living God. It doesn't make any sense you come to insult me because you don't believe in, in what, in what I, I said and how I understand the scripture. Apostle Paul said, if you think you are anything, 
I also believe I have the Spirit of God. And I know I have the Spirit of God. All right? And, when you know, I've heard individuals saying that uh, revelation and knowledge is progressive. Any knowledge that is outside of what the Scripture says is knowledge of the devil. Take it or leave it. Mind you, I've not said you are going to hell because you don't, you, you don't believe and agree with what I have said. But then deal with it. I don't own hell. I'm not the one that died for you. Jesus died for you. If you want to know, you can actually approach him and ask him to explain this place to you. I understand that there are so many people, many ch churches, even great teachers of the word of God, you know, don't believe in the doctrine or in the, in the ordinance of women covering their heads in church. They don't believe it. And so we have larger number of persons that will attack this and believe that anybody's talking about it is being legalistic. Well, thank you very much. I think I've passed my message. God bless you. I'll be seeing you in the next video. Till then, from me to you. Shalom.